Hi, ערב טוב. Um, good evening. Uh, I will start in Hebrew and then uh, Tomer will continue in English. So uh, good evening, uh, Inge, and uh, we're very happy to have you here tonight. Thank you for accepting uh, our invitation. ותודה לכולם שהצטרפו אלינו הערב. אנחנו מאוד שמחים לארח הערב את אינגה שפכט ממוזיאון נעליים מאוד מאוד מיוחד שהפך להיות הרבה יותר מרק מוזיאון בעיר קטנה בהולנד. ונמצאת איתנו הערב גם גילי גורל משגרירות הולנד. שאנחנו גם מאוד שמחים, וזהו, אני חושבת שצריך להיות לנו ערב מעניין. אז תהנו. תודה. Good evening. We have the privilege of hearing Inge Specht, senior curator at the Shoe Quartier, or the Shoe Museum, depends, I guess, how you want to look at it, and Gilly Gouwel from the Embassy of the Netherlands, that we invited them. to say a few words before we start the lecture. Um, and we'll, we'll, so after uh, Gilly's few words, we'll hear Inge, and then we'll have some time for questions at the, at the end. Um, so Gilly, uh, it's, the screen is yours. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the little cube is mine. Uh, so hi, everyone. Good evening. My name is Gilly Gouel. I'm the public diplomacy officer at the Embassy of the Netherlands in Israel. And I'm also in charge of uh, cultural affairs, as we do not have a cultural attaché. I want to start with a confession. And the confession is that I did not visit the Schoenen Quartier, the, the, the shoe museum that we're going to hear about. But after reading about it in preparation for this evening, I can assure you I will next time I'm, um, I'm in the Netherlands. All the children will go to the Efteling, which is not so far away. <laughs> I will go to the Schoenen uh, Quartier. Uh, one thing I really liked about this museum when I uh, researched about it, and maybe Inga can speak about it uh, later, is the emphasis they seem to put on sustainability. Uh, which is something that the Dutch government and the embassy here finds very important. Um, I like how they take a topic that's very accessible, shoes, and everyone has something to say about that, and they look at it a bit beyond. They use it um, to ask questions about, you know, the materials, what, is the, what are the materials that are used in this industry? Uh, can it be better? Can it be uh, made otherwise? And uh, we think the Dutch government thinks that museums and particular museums that deal with design have a responsibility um, in this case to question this very polluting industry that we all um, use. Anyway, um, I'm happy to see also in this respect that I'm breaking into an open door as, uh, as we say, because I saw on the website of ICOM Israel that the next museum day in Israel on the 9th of May, if I'm not mistaken, is going to have sustainability as one of its main themes. So I'm very happy uh, to see that. Another thing I would like to point out to you, uh, this is something I try to uh, raise every time I talk uh, with people that work in museums in Israel, is that if you look at uh, the visit information on the museum's website, you will see that people Uh, with a museum card can come in for free. And a museum card is something we have in the Netherlands where you have a, a card, you pay not so, such a large amount once a year and you can go into practically all museums or all public museums in the Netherlands from small local museums to the Rijks Museum and you go in for free. So I don't know if this has been tried in Israel before I see Thomas is smiling <laughs> a bit. But um, if this is something uh, you want to learn about from the Dutch experience, I'm very open uh, to research and uh, to talk about it. And um, lastly, uh, Dutch Embassy in Israel, we're open for partnerships uh, with museums or other cultural institutions. So you know, if it's about uh, bringing a speaker from the Netherlands to Israel, or uh, helping with uh, bringing an exhibition or a Dutch artist or designer, to Israel, we're very open uh, to assist, as Tomer knows. Uh, so you can get my detail, my contact details from Tomer, and uh, he'll give you the, con the contact details because he knows that for 2023, we already have a, a deal. <laughs> so yeah. you, can, uh, you can share with others. Um, 
that's it. Thank you all for coming to hear a, a Dutch uh, inspiration story. Thank you, Inga, for sharing. And thanks, Tomel, for inviting me. Enjoy. Thank you. Our pleasure. Uh, Inga, again, the screen is yours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Gilly. <laughs> nice words. I will try to share my uh, my um, presentation. Can you see it all? Because I've completely lost. No, we don't see it. You don't see it. It's a shame. I have to try again. We did try before. Yeah, we did, but uh, <laughs> it's always like that. It's okay. Working. Okay, let's try again. Uh, share screen. Here it is. Yeah, we see your presentation now. Great. Yeah, I can see you too. <laughs> it's nice to see you all. Um, so, welcome from the Netherlands. It's quite dark here outside already. Um, but as you can see on the picture, it's fully daylight. Um, I would like to welcome you to the Schoenenquartier, also pronounced in English as the Shoe Quarter. And um, I will not try to bother you with too much histor history because we don't have that much time. So uh, as you can see, this is the, the, the facade of the museum as it is now. Um, the museum uh, was fully remodeled. Uh, at least this building was fully remodeled, uh, remodeled um, on behalf of the Waalwijk municipality, um, the, the, the city where the museum is located in the Netherlands. And um, it was completely remodeled by the public architects um, and um, uh, museum displays were made by Tinker Imagineers. The, um, um, public spaces were uh, fully um, filled by planemos. As you can see, this is the town hall ensemble where the museum is uh, part of. This was um, designed by the Ar Dutch architects Alexander Kop Kropholler. Um, the sur encircled part is where the museum is located now. On this side, can you see my cursor or? Yeah. yeah. Um, this part of the ensemble is the wedding hall. <laughs> In this part, we have a shoe wholesale located. Over here, there used to be the archives and there's also a restaurant downstairs. And this part is also part of the ensemble and that is an ice parlor, ice cream parlor. Very nice ice cream when you're in the neighborhood, you really can um, um, have to go there. The part where the museum is located in is in this part, quite encircled, and this part was an extension that was built in 1986, an extension of the former town hall. Here we have a, a plan of the first floor, and they, this is the old entrance. This, fortunately, this one has left uh, the building, really. And here you can see what the ground floor is uh, looking like, look like, does look like. We enter the... Um... Oh, I can see I have used a very old... <laughs> map of the museum uh, but nevertheless here you can uh, here you enter the, the museum we have the shop in here here's the entrance deck and um, this part i will show you pictures of the next uh, and we have added some shoe laboratories to the museum so we're not only a museum anymore but we um, come from the the thoughts that we want to combine the past, the present, and the future, but also industry um, and crafts, not only by taking a look at it, but also um, making new um, objects in the labs. And therefore we, we invite all kinds of uh, professionals, art professionals, uh, designers, shoe designers, but we also combine uh, people from different crafts together in the shoe lab so we can make uh, new, um, uh, products, not only shoes, 
but with different um, artists together in the shoe labs. And then the purple part is the museum. We also uh, added all the, the shoe labs, for instance, are always blue and the museum parts are always pink and the public spaces are always green. So you can uh, see on the next um, maps that I sh will show you. This is the um, museum cafe as it is now, but it's also the part where uh, the communities the municipality used to have their meetings. So this is the public, um, how do we call that? The public um, gallery. It used to be the public gallery. And now we have this beautiful museum cafe over here. Mm -hmm. Civic has remodeled the building by using as much uh, of the old ornaments that were in the museum as, uh, as possible. And they added all kinds of um, new materials, mostly um, sustainable as possible, like the hempcrete bar that we have here. I will show you a picture later. Here's another picture of the public gallery on a very sunny day. I can assure you it's not that sunny at the moment. Um, and here's the entrance, and I talked about the hempcrete um, service desk already, and it's go it's it's um, going around all uh, all all the way. Here you can buy your museum tickets. The coffee corner is over here, and on the other side we have part of the one of the labs. I don't know if you know what hempcrete is, but I will try to um, explain. Um, Hempcrete or hemp lime is a biocomposite composite, uh, a mixture of hemp, herbs, and lime, sand, and it's used as a material for construction or hand isolation. And it is, has been built in several layers. As you can see here, you are very enthusiastic about it. These are the people from Planemos. Um, another Part of uh, our sustainable interior is this uh, tiled wall, which is completely made with um, rests of clay and um, what is it called? Oh, enamel. Uh, enamel, as you know, might know, is very toxic, so you don't want to have it in the uh, environment. And this wall is completely handmade by a workshop, a ceramic workshop in uh, nearby that has made all these uh, tiles by hand with um, the animal that they had left from other projects that they worked on. This wall is a uh, design by uh, Laura van Sante um, and EKWC. And as you can see, all the tiles are different, they have all different um, surfaces and colors because of all the animal is reused. On the right hand side of the service desk, we have the uh, museum shop and the museum shop as well as the, the laboratories and the museum cafe are freely accessible with a, without a museum um, tickets. Behind these doors, you have to have a ticket to enter the museum. This is one of our laboratories, um, the, the, the most dangerous one. So we keep the door closed when um, there's nobody at work uh, because the, the machines are too dangerous to be handled by, uh, by the, the public. Um, here we have all kinds of machinery for making um, the lower parts of footwear. And here we have some shoe sewing machines and other light machines that we can use to make uppers for shoes. But it's not only shoes that we make uh, of that have been made here. We also have a, a very um, beautiful 3D printer where we can, uh, at the moment we have a, a project with two designers that are printing uh, very beautiful heels, very special, and they are using it to their uh, leather footwear. 
But on the left hand side, you see, uh, for instance, one of the, the projects that uh, sustainable projects that um, a couple of designers have made in our labs by reusing uh, old Nike sneakers. And they have split up all the, the ornaments and cleaned them and then remodeled them into this, this boot. Another plan for the. See where we are. From um, the shop, we walk into the uh, atrium. And this used to be um, a, a courtyard garden. So the tiles on the floor are. Um, indicate where the, this garden used to be and it is going inside into the um, the entrance. Uh, um, we have added this uh, glass wall and um, uh, the ceiling is has been made is it's an acoustic uh, ceiling and it's made by PAT bottles. This wall used to be the outside wall and all the, the squares with the, the bricks inside that used to be the, the windows of the, the former offices. Um, the circles were sewn out and refilled with the, the red brick. So it looks like it's have, have always uh, been like this, but it's completely uh, reconstructed. Also the staircases were added because the staircases used to be behind the, the walls. On this floor, we also have our first permanent, semi-permanent exhibition, how it's made. And in that exhibition, we uh, explain how leather and shoes are made in a ridiculously uh, few steps, um, namely 27. And when you see an upper for a shoe, most of the times uh, it takes 50 to 100 steps to, to uh, manufacture an upper. So 27 for the complete um, um, construction is, is rather silly, but it's uh, very convenient for our visitors because it's simple to um, um, understand. The machine over here was um, put inside the building before everything else entered. So the, 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 the wall on this side was put in after the machine got into the building because it was too big to get it in afterwards. We have combined old machinery with new uh, frames. So this has the, um, um, still an industrial feeling, but um, like it's an object, um, it is more like a museum object within the frames. And it's a mixture of old and new ornaments. Also with this table, uh, which um, contains a lot of uh, small machinery for making uppers. And on both sides, we have added this um, metal table with um, uh, some videos. And on the other hand, uh, on, the, on the other side, we have um, a very nice interactive um, where people can just find out what it's like to be uh, working as a, um, a sewer in a, in a shoe factory. And it's very hard, I can tell you. <laughs> Um, like um, we heard before, we, we try to focus on sustainability, so we're not only showing um, leather, but we also try to show um, all kinds of materials that can be used to make um, sustainable shoes. It's hard to see, but on here, on here we have a shoe made of mycelium, uh, which is uh, the... the substance of mushrooms that grow on the ground and you can really um, grow it into shape if um, uh, with a good mold. Um, we also have um, all kinds of fruit leathers, uh, material made of coffee uh, grounds. Um, unfortunately, it, it's, it is still very hard to make a, a composite uh, material that is also uh, as sustainable as we would like to uh, and still usable to make shoes of. So most of these sustainable so-called vegan leathers uh, do have a layer of polyurethane on top, <laughs> which makes it really hard to um, um, reuse it again.
Then I would like to take you up to the first floor where we have another uh, exhibition. You can see from the, the atrium from upstairs. And on the first floor, we have a semi-permanent exhibition uh, that is called The Story of the Langstraat. And the Langstraat is the area uh, in which um, for centuries have been um, shoe production and leather production in the south of the Netherlands. And here we tell the story of the people who, uh, who worked and lived here, but also uh, how the uh, environmental, um, uh, how, the, how the environment has changed over the centuries due to the, the industry that has been here. On the left hand side, you can see right into our library, which we call the Knowledge Center, because it's not only containing um, a large amount of books, but also all kinds of materials, samples that people can um, uh, feel and see uh, for using, uh, for making inspiration, for making new shoes, or just visitors can come here and see what it's like, um, how uh, a snake skin feels like, and what uh, um, an alligator skin feels like. But we also have um, a lot of um, semi-fabricated uh, materials in the drawers over here. So this is all free access accessible whenever for the visitors, um, but with a museum ticket, but you can come here and sit or just read a book or watch what's inside the drawers. Then on the second floor, we at the moment we house this temporary exhibition, which is called Put On Your Red Shoes. And um, this is all about the connection uh, between shoes, between footwear and popular music. The uh, exhibition is divided in three parts, icon, idol, and influencer. And now we're looking at the idol part and that contains all kinds of footwear worn by uh, celebrities like uh, here on this side, the boots of um, one of the uh, Abbas singers, uh, Agneta or Anifrit, and the boots worn by Benny. Here we have some shoes from Madonna, um, worn by David Bowie. And here we have an Israeli um, designer called Kobe Levy, and he has uh, made several shoes for celebrities. And in this exhibition, we host his double boots worn by Lady Gaga in the video Born This Way. And maybe you can see over here are some flamingo pumps worn by uh, Fergie. This is the icon uh, gallery. And maybe you can recognize um, a festival uh, ground over here with uh, the grass on the, on the floor. Here are several shoes that, uh, that have been worn by celebrities. Um, and uh, the fact that they were worn by celebrities has, has given them an iconic status like Dr. Martin's um, Adidas sneakers, Van Jacket Vans. And we have all kinds of celebrities on the sides of the walls uh, depicting the um, pop artists that have been wearing these shoes. And the last field of this exhibition is our um, um, silent disco. You can listen to a popular music containing all kinds of references to uh, shoes, footwear, Adidas, Nike, etc. And the shoes on the wall are. Um, in this place that look like uh, Instagram posts. And here we host the shoes of celebrities that have made their own collections, that, that are selling their collections through uh, Instagram, or that have uh, collaborations with uh, famous um, shoe um, labels. And then last but not least, our semi-permanent uh, shoe exhibition, which is called When the Shoe Fits, and here we show the um, connection between footwear and the people that wear them. Uh, on the right-hand side, you, we start by the, um, the countries or the, the surfaces uh, where specific shoes have been worn. 
mostly traditional shoes that we don't see um, so much in those uh, areas anymore, but they are um, quite recognizable for the, for the areas that there are, the, are depicted over here. On the left-hand side, we show the, ritual, the rituals that can be uh, used on shoes. And at the back, we also have um, sports shoes, working shoes, and shoes for um, orthopedic shoes for people with an, um, disability. No pay, no gain, and all kinds of really crazy footwear that is either not wearable or just um, meant to be an, an art uh, object. This is the last field of the shoe exhibition. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Inge. Um, and I think you can st stop sharing, but uh, I would like to to ask something. Um, we were just talk, starting to talk about this presentation. You talked a lot when we talked, you explained about the, the history of the museum and the, the change that it was um, going through, uh, mm -hmm. brought it to this um, new location. Maybe you can explain a little bit what the museum <clears throat> started like and what was the change that happened that brought it to this um, beautiful uh, renovated building? Yes, of course. Um, well, the, the museum started in 1954 uh, with the collection of a former um, teacher shoemaking. Um, we moved, um, at first, the first museum was located in a very uh, small uh, establishment. Um, where only five to 10 people at the same time could enter the building. And whenever we had a, a couch, a coach full of people, then the other 25 had to wait outside uh, until the, the first five were uh, finished. Then we uh, moved to, to other buildings. The last one was a, a former shoe factory, a very large building, uh, but really, really old. Um, we entered it when it was 25 years old and uh, we le left it last year. And um, you, the, the roof was really, um, um, really bad. So whenever it was raining hard, you had to look up to the ceiling all the time to make sure that you wouldn't get uh, wet because the rain would, would fall right through it. So it was definitely uh, time to leave that building. But it took us about, it, it took us from, nine, the first plan started uh, in 1999 to remove the museum to where it is located now. I started, um, um, the, the, I, I attended the project in 2004. Uh, unfortunately, we had some bad luck with uh, financing and also with the financial crisis in 2008. Then we uh, merged with a, um, an international uh, innovative footwear um, um, school, which got bankrupt in 2017. And by then the museum had already been closed because we were planning to move the next year to the, the current building. So then we, we were um, staying at the old building for another five years making plans for this new renovation. And it took quite longer than we uh, planned um, that it would take. But fortunately, uh, just a year ago, we were about to um, move our, or to, to um, install all the objects in the new exhibitions. And uh, yeah, we have been working there since June two, 2022. So it's not, it's, it's about a year now, just yeah. a small year. And how was it, how, who financed the museum? Who decide, is it a municipality, a government or mixed private? What's... We get, um, uh, we are uh, subsidized by the municipality. 
we rent the building from them. Um, and then we have some more uh, um, funding for um, uh, staff and, um, well, the exploitation of the, of the museum. But we are... Uh, um, no, so, and, um, we are a foundation itself. Okay. And could you elaborate a little bit more about the the effect on the community, on how you work with the community around? We, maybe a little bit more about the the shoe lab that you are installed. How they operate? Who who is coming there? Like, what's what's the relationship um, with the museum? And yeah, we have. Um, well, I have to say first that the municipality wanted to have us uh, into the city center where we are now because we came from uh, an industrial zone outside the center. Um, and the municipality wanted us to get to the center because we have a lot of empty um, shops and um, the people are moving out of the city. Uh, young people are moving out. So they wanted to create an uh, attractive city center uh, and therefore the museum, uh, they thought the museum would be a, a great spot to have there. Um, also to make a connection with the um, Efteling and the other uh, events, um, uh, like Gilly was al already mentioning, um, in the surrounding area. And the labs, um, we have, we, we are trying to host uh, several artists and designers, all professionals, but also students to come over to work in the labs uh, to gather, um, um, working together as a, um, a shoe people, but we could also combine uh, some artists for it. For instance, we have an artist that is um, doing great wall, uh, wall panels made of uh, old clothing and he wants to uh, join all kinds of leather jackets into huge wall panels but he is not um, um, into uh, uh, sewing the panels uh, together himself so that could be done in our lab by the volunteers that we uh, host uh, that we have or by uh, students or other um, artists that would like to join the project um, and for instance, the boot that you saw, uh, we invite also all kinds of uh, footwear specialists and designers and shoemakers to come over and uh, to do their projects in the museum where they can be seen by the public. So people can join uh, the, the, the laboratories to watch these artists, uh, artists work at the premises. Um, but the visitors could also do workshops themselves, a, a lot easier than this, of course. Mm -hmm. And these are hosted by our volunteers. That most of them have uh, a history of making shoes or um, leather crafting, um, because this industry is still quite vivid in the in the area. Thank you. Um, if. Do you, any of the participants has a question to Inge? Uh, we'll be happy, I'm sure she'll be happy to answer. Uh, of course. You just have to unmute yourself first, I guess. No, okay. I did, do, we have, do you have? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Inge, it was fascinating. Now I have another place in my list. <laughs> that I should visit soon. So it's great. <laughs> it's getting worse. I'm You're most kidding. welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I have a question. Uh, I'm really into the, I'm really curious about the connection uh, between museum, academy, and in terms of uh, creating knowledge. And I'm really curious about research. If there are some collaborations with researchers or with design schools, but not in terms of, of making shoes, but in researching the, the, the discipline of shoes, the history, or mm -hmm. uh, maybe you can tell something about it. Yeah, I completely forgot to tell that uh, we're not only focusing on um, past, present, and future, but we're also focusing on 
the making, the inspiration in the museum, and the knowledge center where you can find your inspiration. So these are also three elements that we want to combine. And of course, people can come over to research. Uh, we also um, um, can facilitate um, um, research questions. And we've, we get a lot of questions from um, uh, different fields. So it's not only artists or shoe uh, designers and shoemakers, but for instance, we get also a lot of questions from uh, attorneys who are um, into lawsuits um, according um, uh, duplication of uh, uh, all kinds of designs. Okay. So we, we have a lot of different sometimes questions that we didn't think of ourselves before. So it's still uh, very interesting uh, to see what people can come up, can come up with uh, according all kinds of questions. And of course, you can find a lot of uh, history uh, in the in the chemist in the knowledge center uh, center as well. Yeah. And chemis chemistry, we have so much chemistry. Oh yeah, mm. letter chemistry. Here we are. Mm. Incredible. Inge, how many objects do you have in your collection? Uh, if you if you remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do remember. We're working on the collection plan right now, so I'm quite uh, aware of what we have. Um, we have a, a, a quite a broad collection. It's it's really rare, I think, because we have uh, uh, between twenty two and twenty three thousand um, artifacts wow. in our collection. Um, most of them about 13,000 uh, numbers, registration numbers are shoes, footwear, could be single shoes or pairs of shoes, from uh, dating from uh, 1300 until now, but with the uh, emphasis on the 19th and the 20th, 21st century. Um, besides that, we also have a huge collection of skins, and hides. So we have. Uh, we re just two weeks ago we we uh, um, opened a drawer and we had some skins out, and it appeared that we had lion skins and kangaroos and elephants and all kinds of <laughs> very tragic animals that are completely flat by now and that have never left the drawers for I think. 30 or 40 years. So it's really, really a pity that we have these. But of course, they are now in the collection. Uh, we also have a large amount of um, machinery, as I showed you on the, uh, the slides before. The, we have very small machinery from one kilo, but we also have these huge machines weighing um, over 5,000 kilos really really big stuff and um about a thousand of them we have and what do we else have in store uh bags and purses suitcases um very small ornaments like um key holders um um, um glasses in the shape of a boot um plates with an ornament a shoe ornament on top yeah well and we also have a very beautiful collection of gilt leather um i don't know if you um know what gilt leather is but um it's it's the the the, the follow up of the carpets and um it was used before paper wall um paper to cover uh, all kinds of walls it's leather uh, on it's it's um, it's a construction of leather and where they put on silver, silver um, folion, and then afterwards it's uh, it's em it's embossed and it's painted with um, lacquer, so it get a golden um, surface and it's very very beautiful. We we do have a lot of them um, fragments from the 17th, 18th, and 19th century. Really beautiful. And how do you get new objects into the collection? Do you do you buy them? Is it are they donated or what? Do you have a, a, a purchase? We hardly, yeah, we hardly ever buy a, a new collection. 
uh, we did uh, occasionally for the new exhibitions uh, a lot of sneakers that we didn't have yet. Uh, and also the sustainable sneaker collection that we have, um, which is very doubtful is it, if it's really sustainable because it's a mixture of a lot of plastics and then the uh, vegan leathers. Um, but most of the time we, uh, we, we, we get so much donations um, because the industry has been very vivid until the 1980s and now we there's still a lot of um, people that used to work in the industry but are moving to uh, elderly people people homes and they try to get rid of uh, all the stuff they have collected over the years so we we get donations we have to refuse donations <laughs> hardly uh, almost every day we have so much donations if we Wow, sounds fascinating. Um, Inge, thank you very much. I'll just uh, do another one if anybody wants to ask somebody something that's now the time. Um, but I don't see. Uh, okay, yeah. Hi. <laughs> um, I, I just got very curious when you uh, paused um, describing the lion and the other exotic animal skins and after this um, very beautiful presentation about uh, fashion and aesthetics, I was wondering if there is any political issues that you'd have to deal with um, in the work and in the museum, and if at all you deal with it in the presentation. Like, as you said, the lion leather was a very uh, strong moment for me to mm. um, see you struggle with this subject, and I got really curious if um, there is more to it. Uh, and you mean by our collection or uh, in general? In general, as a museum that is dealing with a subject that has such a um, simple front as shoes and fashion, but I can imagine that there are some political issues behind it, like mm -hmm. animal rights changing through the area through the years or um, other issues that might be um, related. So I was curious if this is something that you constantly pushing away or is it something that you are dealing with and trying to um, work with? Um, until now, we, we didn't have much uh, to do with animal rights, uh, but that's because we don't have this skin collection on display so far, um, which I find quite annoying for a bit because we do have this collection and um, one um, there used to be times that people thought this was the right thing to do and it was possible they they made this complete co collection to show what they were capable of in a, in a telling way in a, quite a, um, concerning uh, production and industrial uh, knowledge um, and personally i think it's uh, quite hard to see that these animals had to die to um, be stored in a, a storage facility the rest of their lives um, as an object. So I'd rather um, do something with these skins than just keeping them locked and out of sight. Um, and we had, I personally I had an uh, idea to combine um, um, in the future uh, an exhibition with skins and fur uh, combining combined with um, all kinds of paintings depicting beautiful um, uh, clothing made by all kinds of exotic animals and to um, intervene no, not to intervene but to to collaborate with uh, animal rights organizations um, to make people aware of the fact that we are still wearing furs even if we think it's synthetic because i don't know what it's like in israel but we have um some um clothing brands over here that 
make um, coats with huge uh, hoods with a fur, um, uh, for what it's called, the, the thing around the, the hood. People think it's synthetic, but most of the time it's made of uh, dog fur. But people don't know. Uh, so it could also be a very nice uh, subject to make people more aware of what they are really buying. So I think there might be a possibility to combine it in a way that, that you're not only showing the objects that you still have in store, but that you also make people aware of the fact that sometimes you, you just don't know or people or industry is trying to fool you. And that's the same what we try to do with the, uh, the vegan leather uh, objects. Because I call them vegan leather, but for real, I hated the, the, the term vegan leather because leather is only made with animal skins. And uh, it's, there's nothing animal about the, the, this vegan uh, leather. Um, and like I said, it's, it's sort of greenwashing because you think you have something really sustainable on your feet but in fact you are still wearing plastics because these materials cannot do without the polyurethane uh, coating on top so it's absolutely impossible to um, recycle them it's it's plastic is that a, an answer to your question yeah i'm fascinated by this subject i, I, I just find it very interesting the the the, the place where this um a simple uh, subject as shoes and aesthetics becomes very much more complex i find it very interesting point for myself to think yeah. about yeah. it's it's the best part of the shoe museum i think <laughs> <laughs> um do you have any more questions from anybody um okay inga thank you very very much for You're giving welcome. us a tour at your museum uh Definitely. I hope to, to be able to welcome you one day all. Um, uh, it would be very nice to see you. Same here. Thank you again very much. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Uh, Thank you very much. It was Thank very you. interesting. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye Have bye. a nice evening and a very nice conference. Thank you see very you much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank Good you. Night. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. תומר, כן. אתה יכול להגיד איפה זה בדיוק? אני לא היה לי נעים לשאול אותה, כי חשבתי שאולי תספסתי. בכלל, זה טוב, היא עדיין איתנו. זה באמת איזו עיירה קטנה בהולנד, צריך פשוט לעשות שום איזונים. בדרום הולנד, בדרום הולנד, כפי שהבנתי, נכון? אני לא יודע להגיד בדיוק, אבל... כן, כן, זה בדרום הולנד. לא ידעתי, לא ידעתי. תומר, תסיים את ההחלטה, בבקשה. רגע, נכון, רגע, דקה, דקה.